Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I clicked end session by accident Like I said today, we're gonna have a look at some shading techniques that's just going to see what the best light is for us I think this light looks best so I'm using the Optima wood burner today and I'm Got my extra small spear shader out, which is one of my favourite pens to use for pyrography because they're a really versatile pen. You can use so many different parts of the pen that it's just a wonderful pen to use. You can basically you could make a whole portrait with this pen. I mean, this whole piece up to now. Has been made using just the extra small spear shader. So if you haven't got a spear shader in your pack, I would certainly look at trying to get yourself one. They look a bit like an iron on a on a tilt, but we ne we don't use the surface flat very often. We always have it on an angle. When we're creating a pyrography, I mean, I use, because I'm right-handed, even though it may look like I'm left-handed on this, I use the edge here, mainly, for creating my pyrography. And so today, I want to give a little talk about basic shading and layering techniques for anybody that's new to pyrography and would like to learn more about how to create more realistic looking works of art or you know take your art to the next level you feel like you you past the silhouette stage and you know you've done all your cartoon your wood burns and you really want to do something that looks real and has you know depth and dimension to it so that's what we're going to take a look at if we just bear with me a second and get my hand on my feet so like I said I've been working on Mr Fox for a little while now I get obsessed with <laughs> pyrography projects and keep going and going at them until either I burn myself out or they get completed. Now one of the shading techniques I wanted to discuss today was with like hair is a great example of some of the shading techniques that you'll need to create say your dog portrait or your cat portrait. What you would do basically is keep your heat nice and low. Don't get tempted to crank the heat up too high. See, if you have your heat set on a really high setting and this pen's glowing red, you'll touch down and you will just burn the wood. You'll just char it and make a real mess. So always have your heat setting 
at a level that you can control. You know, you don't have any heat going down. into the wood that you are in control of. And then we'll have a look at this muzzle because it isn't quite finished the muzzle. When we're doing shading of any say animal or person or even an object you have to think about how it would look from a three-dimensional point of view. So you get your basics, you do your eyes, you get your nose in, and you get your ears started. But then you have to build up your coat of fur. If you think about a real life dog or cat, They're not just going to have one layer of fur, are they? Otherwise, it, you know, unless what do you call them, Siamese cats or whatever. You know, they're going to have loads of fur. And so basically, we, that's what we have to do is layer up all those layers of fur, or as many as we can, to start capturing more realism and shape to the piece let's take for example I so said the muzzle we know it's going the fur is going up this way so what I would do to start with is just using pretty much the tip of my pen make flicks in an upward direction of which way the fur is going. It's no good flicking this way if you're trying to show the streamline of it going, you know, up the muzzle to the middle of the face and upwards. So you always go in the direction of the fur. And that sounds straightforward enough. Another thing you do have to take into account, which is really important with pyrography, is you're not going to create a really stunning piece. I'm not saying this is a stunning piece by any means, but you're not going to create a, a masterpiece in a day. You know, it's just not going to happen. You're going to maybe spend a week, two weeks, depend, maybe more, depending on how much detail you want to go into with a piece. So patience is a massive part of pyrography. And it's something you do need to have in abundance. And as you see, with this piece off in the distance with the fox we've got his near side which is nearest to us and then you see he's on like a what two thirds three quarter side pose so this side of his fur has to be darker than this side to push this side deeper into the wood and make it give it the illusion that there's depth to the piece and again with with a fox on this sort of area around the eye it's going to have short fur strokes So you just keep layering it away. I mean, you can turn your heat up to you, till you find a comfortable level for yourself. I like to start off lower than burning hot because if you start off too high, you've got no room for manoeuvre. It's 
is the same with pyrography. It's easier to go darker than it is to go lighter. And that is gospel. <laughs> because if you go too dark, then you're getting the sandpaper out. And the next thing you know, you're making a real mess out of the piece of art you're working on. So always, sorry, always set off on a lower heat and gradually turn the dial up until you find that perfect heat setting for you where you're in control it's not getting away from you the heat as you can see it doesn't even look maybe like I'm adding any shading to it but I am gradually building layers upon layer of fur to the distance to push this side back that's what we have to think is, is say if you're doing your dog or your cat think about like if they were sat in front of you you know how would the shading of them look if your pet was sat there you know and then it'll start opening your mind to seeing all the different shades and little tonal differences that help you to push back the fur This piece of Mr. Fox, ignore the fox glove at the minute, that was just some crazy idea I've had this morning. That I was just tinkering with and starting, I'm not committed <laughs> fully yet to that. I don't want someone that says invite people to go live together, so. We'll just leave that. Another part of shading techniques when we're doing fur is you have to start thinking about when the fur starts getting longer you know around these animals neck how do you shade that and give it a nice flow to it and when we're talking about like longer hair we're not doing individual strands of hair every individual strand because that would just take forever what we're looking at is just making like smooth sort of like clumps if you will it's just if you think about someone's hair you don't see every individual piece you just see the shape don't you in the sheen so that's something else you need to capture when you start getting down to the neck area a piece of pyrography art. You know, I can sit here just for days and days on end just tinkering and trying to find the perfect shading tone. Excuse me, I'm an e cig wood burner. So the smoke you see is not coming off the wood, it's coming off my e cig. 
the bit I've been working on here is starting to get the long hair that's coming down from the fox's mane so with this shading technique it's slightly different where we're up here we're doing short strokes with a little flicks down here we're doing a different kind of technique we're actually shading the curls and the highlights we want in the hair so if you think about it the light captures certain areas isn't it? and you know if you want to make a turn then you come from the darkness out into the light and then at the end of your turn you go back a bit darker and gradually over time because we don't want to rush this process you will start to build up some shape and that's what all pyro artists are searching for well all artists are searching for is more depth more detail that you can't get there in one foul swoop if you use what I call the burn low and slow method of pyrography you give yourself the best opportunity <laughs> to um, capture the perfect moment when your shading is all just balanced right His mouth still needs working here around the chin area. If left, you leave a little gap so you can signify the change like underneath his chin where there's less light getting because it's been shade shadowed by the muzzle. This hair then has to go darker than what was on the side just think about shadow casting you know that this long muzzle is going to cast a shadow down onto the fox's mane underneath <coughs> underneath so you've got to go darker will get out what you put in I'm doing shading like this to try and give your coat a flow of a lowish medium heat and just look for opportunities to capture depth and flow think about you know if if all the hair was out in front of you it wouldn't all just be straight out would it it's going in different directions and so there's some areas that you go darker where you can put like an undertone to the coat Right here, for example, if we follow this round, I can 
should start building like it popping out from the fox's face. And again, my heat is not too high. So I don't zoom past that perfect moment when everything you know balances out and looks right. To, to do a, a masterpiece, I mean, like I said, this isn't a masterpiece, but to do a masterpiece. You know, you're talking a couple of weeks of searching for those perfect shading tones. If you just want to do pyrography for fun and just stick to you know silhouettes and lettering it's still the same principle you don't have your heat setting too high if your heat's too high you're just going to make a mess out of what you're working on hello to Elvon who's joined I don't know if you're into pyrography, Elvon. I'm having a look at some shading techniques for pyrography with a fox I'm working on. Just realised that maybe you couldn't see the bottom. As I start working my way down, I on this side profile, I've got a lot more fur to put in here, but it's going to be darker than up the top. So at the moment, it just looks like you've got lines and stuff in, but you're going to shade all of those lines and everything up so it looks like it's a coat of fur. So the extra small space shader is the perfect tool. Depending on what wood burning you've got, if you've got like an Optima or a razor tip, I think they're the big two, aren't they? I use the Optima then you will have the space shader in your pen set or certainly they'll be available to you from the big manufacturers you will get a space shader option so definitely have one of them in your set Just keep looking for opportunities to capture more depth and shape. I mean, here, like I said, I want to put a drop in as it curls round and then it drops off. Start lightly building some shading to signify the drop off. And if anybody has any questions at any time, 
comment them up, I don't know how it works, comment them and I'll answer them for you. My wood burning journey started in 2019, it was. My wife had bought me <coughs> uh, like a mini Dremel kit and a basic pyrography set and late in 2019 I had to go with this pyrography set it was one of them soldering iron types and I just fell in love with it I thought wow this is a cool way because I was into making Ouija boards at the time this would be a really cool way of making the Ouija boards you know shade burn the letters in instead of carving them into the boards like I was doing but that first pyrography pen even though it was great for learning with at the start got really really hot and I used to have to bind my fingers up in pieces of leather I got the cash in the bag, stadium packed